T-Roc Cabriolet is that rarest of things, an open-topped SUV. A few compromises were necessary to create this design, but they're not things that many potential buyers of this model will be too bothered about. At heart, it's still a T-Roc, and this car still has all the quality, style and character of a memorable open-top Volkswagen, which makes it, in its own individual way, very desirable indeed. Given the fashionable demographic of SUVs and crossovers, it's surprising that we haven't seen more convertible ones. Uh, before the introduction of the open top model that we're going to look at here, the Volkswagen T-Roc Cabriolet, the only one that we'd previously seen was a short-lived Range Rover Evoque convertible. Undaunted, Volkswagen, building on over 70 years of Cabriolet heritage, was determined to bring T-Roc buyers this wind-in-the-hair variant, perhaps because all the brand's other Cabrios of recent years, the EOS and open-top versions of the Golf and the Beetle, are all long gone. It just doesn't seem right that the VW brand should be without a convertible. And now that it isn't, what do we think of this one? This T-Roc Cabriolet certainly doesn't feel particularly sporty, uh, firstly because you sit at SUV height, and secondly because of the extra 194 kilos that this Cabrio variant has to carry around. And that becomes quite evident in the unlikely event that you're minded to try to start chucking the thing about. This is very much a Boulevardier Cabriolet for fashionistas, and they'll want to know about the hood, which, as usual with a modern Cabrio, can be operated on the move at low speeds. Now, it's a multi-layered fabric affair, which lowers in nine seconds at the press of a button uh, between the seats here, and it stores itself neatly above the luggage compartment behind the rear bench. Now, if you don't have backseat passengers, then this optional wind deflector can be fitted across the rear chairs to help reduce high-speed buffeting. But if you forget to take that out of the boot and you get sick of being blown about, or if bad weather threatens, then the roof can quickly be raised again in just 11 seconds. This Cabriolet borrows two petrol engines from the ordinary model, a 115 PS 1 litre TSI offered only with six-speed manual transmission, and a 150 PS 1.5 litre TSI Evo unit, which is the one we're trying here, which is offered with either a manual box, as in this case, or with a seven speed DSG automatic. Even this 1.5 litre version isn't exactly a ball of fire. It makes 62 from rest in 9.6 seconds on the way to 127 miles an hour. We would really be tempted to stick with the smaller unit. There is the option of a plusher R-line trim with lowered suspension and larger 19-inch wheels, which together will give a noticeably firmer ride, so try before you buy there. All versions of this car get a standard drive profile selection driving mode system, which allows you to tweak throttle response, steering feel, and on the DSG variants, gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, there are eco, normal, and sport modes. Uh, plus, there's an individual menu too, if you want to set your own parameters. Volkswagen turned to specialist Carmen to design this car, who in turn quickly realized that quite a few fundamental changes to the T-Roc chassis would be needed if the top was going to be chopped off this model. At the front, a wide grille integrates into the characteristically flat dual headlights, while the separate indicators and daytime running lights distinguish this design spec variant from the alternative sportier R-Line trim level. In creation of this Cabriolet variant, 40 millimeters has been added to the T-Roc wheelbase, which has in turn added 34 millimeters to the car's overall length. Uh, plus a range of strengthening measures have been introduced for the floor plan, the doors, the sills, and the windscreen surround. Uh, it doesn't stop there either. The four framed doors that you get in a hardtop T-Roc here make way for a pair of longer, frameless ones. And the usual B pillars have been dispensed with too. Now you can operate 
all of these frameless windows via the key fob, but annoyingly, not the roof mechanism. So I'm going to have to get in to show you how that works. Now we touched on the roof in our driving experience section, but here's a quick recap. Uh, you get a fabric top here, unlike the folding metal top that you got in the old EOS model, and you operate it via this button down here between the seats. Uh, if bad weather threatens, then it raises in just 11 seconds. Now, unfortunately, you can't have the roof fabric in any color other than black, but it is a thoroughly engineered thing with three layers, a headliner, cushioned mat, and outer cover. So Stanley knife wielding hoodlums should be thwarted. Uh, this tough top weighs 53.1 kilos in total, and its structure incorporates four cross braces and a larger front cross strut. Fabric holding rails connect the covers to the cross struts, preventing ballooning at higher speeds, uh, improving aerodynamics, and also reducing noise levels in the interior. The seams of the outer fabric sections are designed to function as additional drip rails, which is nice because when you're lowering it again, uh, you don't want to get sprinkled on, and you won't. Uh, when the roof is lowered, it folds into a Z-shaped package behind the rear seats, and when the top's down, there's no roof compartment lid. Its solid front cross strut serves as its cover, and that contributes to a cleaner and sleeker design. This also means that the 284 litre boot capacity is unaltered, regardless of whether the roof is open or closed. And there's not much more space beneath the boot floor, particularly if you wisely pay extra for a space saver spare wheel. And if you need more cargo carrying space, then these catches release the 50-50 split rear backrest. You might actually need to operate them quite frequently because of this trunk's relatively low capacity and its restricted height. There is also a high loading lip. At the wheel, the added rake of the windscreen and the closer proximity of its header rail, which is positioned rather close to the extent of your peripheral vision, gives a more enclosed, intimate feel than you'll get in a conventional T-Rock. You might quite like that. Uh, less welcome is the fact that this Cabrio design has a relatively high shoulder line, a shallower glass house, and quite a high rear end. All of those things contribute to more restricted over-the-shoulder vision. Otherwise, the cabin layout is pretty standard T-Rock, and it's a little doer unless you opt for the optional coloured dash packs. A high-set, glass-fronted Discover Navigation 8-inch infotainment screen dominates the centre stack on all models. It comes complete with sat-nav and the usual DAB stereo, Bluetooth phone and car informational functions, along with Volkswagen's clever App Connect setup for smartphone mirroring. And there's the possibility to view a further TFT monitor through this three-spoke steering wheel. This active info display is a digitalized, customizable instrument binnacle screen, and it's either standard or optional, uh, depending on the trim choice that you make. It's certainly effective in deflecting attention away from some of the fascist, hard, brittle surfacing. Now, we're getting used to this kind of thing from various brands now. A 12.3-inch TFT screen, which uh, completely replaces the conventional instrument binnacle dials, and which can be configured to show analog look dials, a full screen sat nav, and various stages in between. So let's finish with a look in the back seat, which you won't be able to use if the optional wind deflector has been fitted across it. The whole idea of this Cabriolet variant's wheelbase increase was to enable this convertible model to be a proper adult four-seater, but that's a big ask with any compact drop-top, and so it proves here. You'll need a degree of understanding from those ahead of you if you're going to have any real legroom at all. Still, if that is possible, you'll find yourself relatively well provided for. The seat back isn't too upright, uh, there are twin centre vents here and a couple of USB-C ports and seat back pockets.
From launch, pricing starts from around £27,500. That's getting on for nearly £4,000 more than an equivalently specified version of the fixed top model. So you've really got to want the open top vibe here. You have to have entry level design spec if you're going to have the base 1 litre TSI 115 PS petrol engine. Otherwise, it's the 1.5 litre TSI Evo 150 PS petrol power plant, costing around £1,500 more and available in either design or plusher R line levels of trim. With this larger engine, there's the option of a seven speed DSG auto gearbox for an extra £1,600. Go for that with R-Line trim and you'll need around about £34,000. Still, there's plenty of kit fitted across the range, in addition, of course, to the fully powered fabric hood. Uh, even design spec gets you 17-inch alloy wheels, uh, adaptive cruise control, ambient lighting, a driver profile selection, driving mode system, and a Discover Navigation infotainment system with an 8-inch centre dash screen. Uh, the R-Line spec adds larger 19-inch wheels, lowered sport suspension, an R-Line body styling kit, LED headlamps, front fog lamps, more responsive progressive steering and a 10.25 inch active info display digital instrument cluster screen. And key options, uh, well, you're going to want the wind deflector and a space saver spare wheel, both of which annoyingly cost more. And you'll probably be paying more for your choice of paint color since the only standard shade is solid ivy green. Uh, we have King's Red Metallic here. Uh, you should probably lift the rather dour feel of the dash with customizable dash pads in Ravenna Blue or Turmeric Yellow. Uh, other key options include larger 18 or 19 inch wheels, uh, DCC, dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping, keyless entry, a park assist system, and the active info instrument binnacle display screen on the design spec models. Spoil yourself if you like with the optional 400 watt six speaker beat sound pack too, and possibly also with Vienna leather upholstery. The T-Rock Cabriolet structure has been designed to offer optimal safety with a rollover system fitted behind the rear seats. Uh, two thick panels extend behind the headrests if the car detects transverse acceleration or a tilt angle above a certain parameter. In addition to these, the car's windscreen frame and the A-pillars are bolstered with reinforcement tubes, while reinforcements that are specific to the T-Rock Cabriolet are also integrated into the floor. Uh, camera safety kit across the range includes autonomous braking, VW's front assist and city emergency braking system, plus lane assist and a driver alert system. Let's get to the WLTP figures. The base one litre TSI petrol model manages a minimum of 44.9 MPG on the combined cycle and an emissions high of up to 142 grams per kilometer of CO2. Upgrade yourself to the 1.5 litre TSI petrol engine we're trying here, which can shut down unneeded cylinders of the engine at low to medium throttle. And the figures are up to 42.2 MPG and up to 152 grams per kilometer for the manual, or up to 40.5 MPG and 159 grams per kilometer for the DSG Auto. Insurance is group 14E for the one liter TSI design model, 19E for the 1.5 liter TSI design, and 21E for a 1.5 liter TSI R-Line. As for servicing, uh, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there is a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance regimes. Uh, you will choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year. And with this, the car will typically be looked at uh, every 12 months. If, however, your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your T-Rock will regularly be driven uh, on longer distance journeys, then you'll be able to work with a flexible regime and that can see you traveling up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. Uh, warranties, now the standard package, that is three years and 60,000 miles. Can this car provide everything? The desirability of a cabrio, 
the promise of sporty motoring and the practicality of an SUV. Well, of course it can't, but the target market probably won't care. The T-Roc Cabriolet looks great, it makes a great street side statement, and it won't require a lottery win to buy one. Potential buyers will be sold already. Whatever we happen to say here about stodgy handling, limited interior boot space, higher pricing, and slightly compromised efficiency. So we won't bother to carp about any of that. This is a pleasure purchase and it should be unconstrained by thoughts of sensibility. Yet you could own and run one, ideally as a second car, with very few practical compromises. And when the sun comes out, you'll be in your element.